ProPresenter is a media presentation tool, so you spend much of your time working with videos and looping backgrounds and still images. So let's look at the tool set inside ProPresenter to organize and make the most of your media. We're going to be focusing on the video and image bin, and you can open or close this by clicking on the icon in the toolbar. But even when it's closed, you still have access to the transition for the video and image bin, so which transition you want to use and how long it's going to take, which is really handy to change on the fly. I'm going to open this back up, and I'm just going to move this up so it's a little easier to see. Now you'll see we have a couple different view options here. We can be in a thumbnail view or we can go to a table view where we can see all of the different information about each video or image and we can change the size of our thumbnail. So I can scale this up or down to change how large we want those thumbnails to be. Now there's two main types of content in this bin. There's background content and foreground content. Background content usually doesn't have audio and is meant to play behind the lyrics or text. So if I click on this video and then throw a slide up, you'll see that the content stays behind the text and I can switch videos and play back different content and it will always stay behind that text. But if I go to a foreground video and click on that, you'll see that it plays above everything else and it takes precedent and usually these have audio. Now let's talk about organization. You'll see below here we have some different tags and this is a way that we can organize our media by type. So we can go through and I've actually already gone through and tagged some media. So we have some subtle backgrounds, we have some really high energy and fast moving ones, anything that has to do with nature and down here you'll see another one that's all backgrounds that have blue in it. So we can go back to backgrounds and let's create a new tag. I'm going to right click on this and we're going to call this geometric. And it's now added a new tag. You can see the little gray icon there. We can go over here and right click and change the color of this tag. So let's maybe make this a teal color. And so now our geometric tag is this teal color and we can now start tagging other media. So this is a geometric background. So I'm just going to click and tag that one. Um, this is some more geometric stuff. Um, this one's got some geometric in it. So we can start just quickly going through and tagging all the backgrounds that have geometric shapes in it. So maybe this one is geometric as well. And now when we look at geometric, we'll see all of the backgrounds that are geometric. Another way you can organize your media is through playlists. So I'm going to go down here to our add icon and I'm going to add a new playlist. We'll call this an event playlist and then I can go start grabbing content to add to this playlist. So I can grab backgrounds and even foregrounds and they can all be in the same playlist. Now if I would have multiple playlists that I wanted to group together, I can create a new group folder and put all of those different playlists inside that same folder. Now the last option that we have in our add menu is to add a new hot folder and this is going to automate the way that we bring in content inside ProPresenter. So when I select new hot folder, it's going to ask me for a folder on my hard drive. So I'm going to select this Brad's media folder on my desktop that you can see contains some images and video backgrounds and then I'll hit OK. And you can see that it's brought in all of the content from inside that folder for me and it's ready to go. But let's see how this is automated. So basically anytime I add or remove content to this folder, it'll automatically be added inside ProPresenter. So I'm going to go inside this Brad's media folder. I'm going to remove this candles background and you'll see it disappear from inside ProPresenter. Now I can just re-add this back and you'll see it automatically reappear inside ProPresenter ready for us to use. Now hot folders aren't the only way to bring content inside ProPresenter. We can go down here and we can just click on the add icon and find media that we want to add to our library or we can go and we can just drag something from a finder window. So I have a foreground title graphic and so I'm just going to add it to my foregrounds and this is ready to go and has been added to ProPresenter for me. Now let's look at how our background videos play back. 
So you'll see here that we have an icon telling us that these backgrounds are all set to loop. Now this is really nice because most of the time the videos that you get will automatically loop, but sometimes you'll find some content that doesn't quite loop. So if we look at our nature videos here, you'll see this video clip I found online that's a really cool time lapse piece, but you'll notice at the very end here, it doesn't loop, there's a hard cut. And I want this to loop, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna set this to soft loop. Now when I click on it, you'll notice at the very end there's a dissolve or a fade transition that makes it so this smoothly loops so you don't notice the transition anymore, which is a really, really nice feature. Now there's a couple other options that we have besides loop and soft loop that we can apply to our clips. So we can right click on this clip and we have our option for loop and soft loop. We also have an option for stop, which is the default for foreground video clips where it's gonna play through and when it gets to the very end, it's gonna freeze on the very last frame. We also have an option for next, which means when I play this back, it's going to go to the next clip inside my library. So it's gonna to go to this clip and then this clip is set to loop, so it's just gonna go over and over again. Now we have one more option where we can set a go to queue. So let's say we wanna go from this autumn light clip and we wanna to go to another fall clip of fall sunshine. So now when we click on this clip, It'll play through and at the very end, it's gonna skip ahead to our fall sunshine clip. So we can kind of create a playlist of clips to play in sequence. Now we also have an option to change the transition per clip inside of our video and image bin. So let's say that every time we want this video to play back, we want it to use a different transition than our global video and image bin transition. So I'm gonna go here and I can change the transition. So I'm gonna set this to a fade black and I'm gonna set this a little bit longer, maybe closer to three seconds or so. I'm gonna hit done. And so when this video comes on, it uses the normal fade, but when I click on this clip, you'll see it fades down to black and then comes up from black. So it's using that transition for that clip only. If I click on another clip, you'll see it uses the normal fade transition. And if you wanna change the playback behavior or transition of multiple clips, all you have to do is drag select, right click, and then we can change these, so maybe we wanna set them to a next playback, and we can change their transition maybe to a wipe, and then we can hit done. And now it's applied that to all of our different clips. So now let's go to the background bin and look at how we can apply our different clips to a document. So if we want to add maybe this uh, purple tunnel clip here, I can select this clip, then I can drag it up here and I can either drag it and place it on a slide or you'll see an option that I can drag it and release it and it will create a new slide with that background image. Now I already have a place for this so I'm gonna just drag this clip and drop it there. If I click on it and click on a, a lyric slide, you'll see that it starts playing back and allows me to put my lyrics right over top the video. Now it's great being able to change the playback behavior of a clip or the transition, but what if we want to actually affect the clip to make it fit the mood of what's going on or the color of our staging? Well, you can easily do this with media properties. So I'm going to go over to this triangulated clip and start playing it back, and then I'm going to right click and go to media properties. Now in our queue inspector, we can actually see a live preview of this video clip. We can set new in and out points. So if we wanna get rid of something at the beginning or the end of a video clip, we can easily do that by setting a new in and out point. We can set new thumbnails for our clips, reset our in and out points. Over here, we have all the information about our video clip as well as the transition that it uses. On the next tab, you'll see all of our different fitting options, as well as we can change uh, the orientation of this clip, so we can flip it horizontally or vertically. And if I start playing this back, you'll see that it plays back differently than the clip that's playing over here, so we can see what we're doing affect it live. We can change the volume and the playback rate, so maybe I wanna slow this down a little bit, and so I can slow it down, and now it's playing a little bit slower than the original. 
And then on the last tab, we have all of our different effects. So I can start adjusting things like our color. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change the hue of this clip to maybe match our tunnel clip we have over here. I could also change the saturation, brightness, or contrast. We could apply some blurring to it. So we can add the blur here and we can change how much blurring we want. Um, we can move down and we could apply maybe a color filter. So instead of doing this color adjust, I could just come down, do a color filter, and then find a pink color here or purplish color, and we could apply that. It's going to match my tunnel clip nicely. And then we could do maybe a color invert. We also have edge blurring. So I'll shut this other blur off to show you the edge blur. So the edge blurring is saying it's only blurring the very edges. So I'll turn my blur amount up and you'll see that it's blurring the edges. And then as I move in, it will uh, start getting closer and closer to the center. So that looks kind of nice. It's blurring out the edges. We could do a gray invert. We also have a heat signature option and a sepia tone option. Now I kind of like this, but I'd still like the center blurred. So I'm going to stack another effect on top of it and we're going to add a blur, but my edge blur is still being applied. So I'm going to apply just a little bit of blurring to the center. And then we have a lot of blurring on the outside edges. So now I can close this out and we can apply this clip to maybe our verse. So when our song first starts, we'll have this clip going. And then when we hit the verse, we'll switch to this kind of blurry, slower moving background. Now, since we have all of these powerful options to adjust our clips, we actually can create multiple instances of a video clip and apply different effects to each instance. So let's see how this works. I'm going to go back to my triangulated clip. I'm going to do copy and then I'm going to do paste. And you'll see that we have two different versions in our library. Now, this isn't two separate video clips. It's two references of the exact same video clip. I'm going to right click on this one and I'm going to go to media properties and I'm going to remove all of the effects that I apply to it. So I'm going to remove the blur and the color filter. I'm going to go back and change our flipping that we did to it and our playback rate. I'm going to reset to uh, one time and we'll close this out. And now you'll see we have two different versions in the library. So when I start playing this back, you'll see the original unaltered version. And here when I click on this, you'll you'll see our altered version that's blurred and slowed down. Now you can also change the media properties of items that have been added to a document or a song without affecting the ones in the library. This is what I'm talking about. So I'm going to right click on this clip. I'm going to go to media properties. I'm going to go here and I'm going to change and adjust the color. So I'm going to change the hue of this clip to like green. And then when I play this one back, you'll see that this is green, but the one inside the video and image bin is still purple. So we still have our original here, even though I've altered this one inside of our document. So I hope you can see how you can easily organize your media and the power of all of the different ways that you can customize your media to meet your needs.